Hey guys, Isaac with HPS, and today we're going to do an install video of the HPS muffler for the Polaris boost sled. To install the HPS exhaust onto your boost sled, you will first need, of course, the HPS muffler, which will come with a spare spring. I will show you how we use this in the install later. You will need spring pullers. Uh, right here we have a combination of a long spring puller and a short spring puller. You will for sure need a long one to reach the springs that connect the pipe to the turbo. You will need a six millimeter socket, a 10 millimeter socket with a wrench, a 17 millimeter open end wrench, and some side cutters to clip some zip ties and other zip ties to replace the ones we clip. To begin this install, you will want to start by removing both side panels of the sled, as well as the middle hood with the gauge and cluster on it. To remove the center hood or the instrument portion of the sled, there are two Zeus fasteners on both sides of the sled. Quarter turn Zeus fasteners that you will undo on both ends. and then. Right above the clutch cover, uh, underneath the headlight, inside the sled, there will be a plug that you will need to undo. Once that's all done, all it takes is lifting up on these uh, tabs here and lifting the whole hood off. It comes right off, exposes all that you need to work on the machine. Once the side panel and the hood are off of the sled, we will continue by loosening the six millimeter hose clamp on the cold intake part of the turbo, and then loosening the V-band clamps, which are 10 millimeters. So we'll loosen up the six millimeter hose clamp. And we'll pull the, the tube off of the turbo you want to make sure that nothing drops into the turbo. Next, you will want to loosen the V-band clamps on both the non-boosted end of the exhaust and the boosted end of the exhaust. You want to make sure that you keep track of all your hardware. You don't want to lose them into the sled. That just causes unnecessary problems of fishing out hardware when uh, putting it back together. The turbo V-band clamp is a two-piece. It's actually really easy to come off as long as you can just kind of break it loose. You want to make sure that you keep track of both ends of the clamp so you don't push them and make it fall down behind the muffler. So you could hear that the bolt that held the turbo V-band clamp fell down behind the muffler. And so we'll have to remember to fish that out before we put it back together. After the V-band clamps are loosened and removed, we will then continue by removing the spring, uh, the exhaust springs on both uh, the exhaust valve end and the turbo end. There will be two exhaust springs behind the exhaust valve of the pipe. And once you remove those two springs, uh, this downpipe manifold portion uh, just slides up and off the muffler. There will be an exhaust gasket on this end of the muffler that you will want to, it may be a little hard to, if it's, especially if it's the first time uh, it's been moved, um, but you'll want to pull it off of the exhaust and we'll uh, put that on the HPS exhaust when we install it. After we have removed uh, this little manifold portion behind the exhaust valve, we now want to remove the exhaust springs from the turbo. Uh, this can get a little bit tricky because you got to remove both, not just these two, but the two on the other side. This is where a long, flexible spring hook puller comes in handy. The two exhaust springs on the inside of the pipe towards the motor are the hardest ones to get to. 
Sometimes it's easiest to reach if you move the handlebars and you move uh, the steering uh, shaft out of the way. You want to make sure that when you remove these exhaust springs that they don't go flying off or falling down underneath the engine. It's hard to undo them. Unfortunately, it's a little bit harder to put them back on. We have one more exhaust spring that we have to undo, and this one is actually behind the muffler. It's kind of hard to reach, um, but you'll want uh, another flexible spring puller that you can bend and reach behind the muffler. Once the V-band clamps are removed and the exhaust springs are undone, there is one more thing you will have to do before we can move the turbo out of the way and pull the muffler out. So there is an EGT probe screwed into the muffler behind the exit of the turbo, the intake of the muffler. It's kind of hard to get to. Uh, sometimes it's best if you can reach it to take the 17 millimeter end wrench and undo it and unscrew it. If not, you may have to clip the zip tie that holds the bunched up uh, the extra wire to the EGT probe, just enough to where you can pull the muffler out and undo it from there. I think we can do it from here to where we won't have to be concerned about pulling on the wires when we pull that muffler out. Great, we were able to pull the, e the EGT probe out of the muffler. Okay, when those are all done, the spring hooks, the V-band clamps, and the EGT probe is out of the muffler. What you're going to want to do is move the intake plenum out of the way of the turbo. Again, don't drop anything in the intake of the turbo. We can now push the turbo up and out of the way of the muffler and then pull the muffler out of the sled. And the way you pull the muffler out of the sled is there's a peg behind the muffler on the chassis that the muffler is lifted up and dropped onto. So we're gonna to have to pull it up and pull it out. Okay. There is your stock boat anchor. We get rid of that. When you look on the back side of the stock muffler, you can see this little cylinder uh, exhaust mount that it uses that slides on this peg of this cross member on the chassis. So we're going to want to do the reverse from pulling the stock muffler out and putting the HPS muffler in. We're going to uh, lift up and onto. Uh, this peg that's on the cross member of the chassis, but at the same time, we're going to want to push this exhaust uh, outlet bracket on the HPS muffler into the belly pan, this rubber belly pan portion of the sled. Okay, we got the Muffler slid onto, slid onto the peg, and now we're going to push the muffler down into the belly pan, like so. I put the turbo, I made it up with the inlet V-band flange of the muffler, but we also want to make sure that we keep the inlet of the turbo from the exhaust pipe together at the same time. From there, we can start assembling everything back together. I like to start with putting the spring, the spring behind the muffler on. Okay, we got the back spring on to the muffler, sprung down. I'm gonna go ahead and go around and spring the four exhaust springs that hold the turbo to the pipe.
you want to do the exhaust springs from the pipe to the turbo first because once you put um, this manifold behind the exhaust valve on, it's really hard to reach these, spring, these springs. And then we can put the intake plenum to the turbo back on and remember to tighten that hose clamp. At this point, this is where you're going to use the spare spring provided with your order of the HPS muffler for the boost. And we're going to install it between this intake to the exhaust. There is a spring hook right here. And we're going to spring it to the bottom spring hook on the pipe when it attaches to the turbo. What this will do is it'll help hold the muffler tight towards the pipe. Before we finish putting the V-band clamps on and the um, exhaust manifold behind the exhaust valve onto the muffler, we'll want to put the EGT probe into the HPS muffler. And to do that, we've got to remove the zip tie that holds the extra wiring to the EGT probe. Keep in mind, don't cut the wires, just cut the zip tie. Pull that zip tie out so that it doesn't bounce around in the engine compartment and get in your belts. And from there, you have a long lead to your EGT probe. And what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna move that position. We're gonna route this EGT probe above the turbo and then down into the muffler right here. And then make sure that that probe is tightened and secured to the muffler. Once the probe is tight to the muffler, that's where you'll want to secure the excess wire to the chassis of the sled so it's not bouncing around or rubbing on anything hot. That's where the spare zip tie comes in. And I'm just going to snip the tail off that zip tie. With the EGT onto the muffler and the exhaust springs holding both the muffler and the turbo to the pipe, we can now put this manifold onto the muffler first and then to the pipe and then spring it down and then go through and tighten both V-band flanges on the non-boost end and the boost end of the turbo. You'll start by first sliding the gasket that came off the stock muffler onto the HPS muffler and then you'll take the small end of this manifold, put it onto the muffler, slide it on, just to the right height to where the big end or the top side can mesh perfectly to the exhaust valve. We'll want to reinstall the two exhaust springs that hold the top of this plenum to the pipe. And with everything sitting, uh, as it should rest, that's when we tighten the V-band flange clamps. Now we will put the V-band clamp onto the turbo and the muffler. Then you just want to make sure you crossed all your T's and dotted all your I's. But once the, it's sprung down, everything's clamped down, the EGT probe is on, you've just installed the HPS muffler under your boost sled. Now all we have to do is put the hood and panels back on. Putting the hood back onto the sled is very easy. You'll just want to first make sure that these tabs slide into the appropriate spot. And then the tabs on the hood slide over uh, the Zeus slots of the side panel. And then put the Zeus claps together both ends and then don't forget to plug it back in you
You just installed the HPS exhaust onto the Polaris Boost snowmobile. The HPS exhaust is sure to give you better throttle response, as well as save you almost eight pounds of weight from your stock muffler, and it is the best sounding exhaust in the industry. If you have any questions about this muffler or any other products that HPS offers, go check out teamhps.com, Team HPS, or High Performance Sports on all the social medias, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and we hope to see you out there on the snow. Thanks for watching HPS.